What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be taking a review of the match pass. Is it worth it? We're going to find out. We're also going to be taking a look at training guides and giving you the best player levelings for Matoma, who's in the value pack, and of course for Courtois in the premium pack. A lot of people interested in Courtois there. And we're going to go through those players, right? Firstly, just to get straight into the match pass, obviously if you're new to the game, this is essentially just objectives that you clear just from playing games and you'll get rewarded after every single game, right? The value pack and the premium pack have cards and they are instantly unlocked the second you upgrade your match pass from the regular one to the value or the premium. You can buy both and also, if you clear through this one, which is completely free, you can literally just get all of this stuff in the regular uh, tier for free, but it does stack. So if you decide, you know, after 15 matches, you want to unlock the value match pass, you get everything backdated to you, okay? And that follows true for the whole one. Now, the big selling point of the regular match pass is that it's 100% free, but you do miss out on the players. Also, after this 15 match you will get a free five-star nominating contract that you will be able to turn into Gavi and get for free and redeem this five-star nominating contract for free for Gavi or Reese James. I have a video done on these players, the free players, so make sure and you check that out. Uh, I definitely recommend Gavi, and I'll show you the best training build for him in that video, right? But other than that, right, you do get coins back. So roughly, without going into too much detail, okay, you roughly get about 200 coins back. I think it's like, yeah, 200 in the value and around the same in the premium. But obviously, the premium is going to cost you more. You can see there and go through it. Obviously, you get a couple of extra five-star nominating contracts there as well. And you get a ton more XP, right? So if you want to take a look at exactly what you get, um, you can go through that here very, very deep in, in, in a lot of detail there if you want to. And it'll tell you a little bit about how to claim the rewards and stuff. It's very simple if you are a newcomer. I know a lot of people are asking me about the match pass. However, with the premium tier, you do continue on to the, to the 100 uh, tier. So you have to play 100 matches across all modes and everything, right? So let's get straight into it without further ado. We're not going to waste time on this. I'm going to show you the best builds for these with Matoma, right? So Matoma is definitely a player, I think, if you are looking to unlock his card, right? We're going to show you a build for Matoma here in a second, right? Um, I do feel that Matoma is definitely a card uh, that, as a left midfielder and a Roman flank, He's definitely a card that I feel is one of the best dribblers in the game. This is an extremely good card straight off the rip, right? All important double touch, flip flap, soul control and first time shot with scissors faint. If you are a good dribbler and you like to take it out wide and you like to take it like into the left midfielder position, into a left winger position and have a lot of sub tactics going on, bit of rotation, a lot of crossing. He doesn't have great lofted pass. He doesn't have anything really for a crossing, but you can train him those cards if you want or those skills for this card. It's a very detailed card if you are looking to just have a pure winger. You don't have much uh, passing. You don't have much finishing compared to other wingers. But his Roman flank player ID is very, very effective. And honestly, lads, I do really like the value match pass um, for Matoma. I do definitely think that Matoma is a fantastic player. Um, obviously, he'll go straight into your inbox and we can go back and claim him there. And then, of course, we're going to be able to work through this, right? So I do feel that as if you are going to be playing um, with Matoma a lot, I do feel that he is a good player. He definitely is somebody that I really like to play with uh, out wide, especially other cards of him, okay? Now, we're going to show you a Matoma build, and we're also going to show you what his stats look like fully trained up. So that's just signing him there. And that is going to be his card, right? So he's going to actually turn into a 97 overall left midfielder with this build. I think, honestly, I've seen a couple of people use this build, and I can't really, I can't really make any case for a different build from Atoma. You do need to get the 90 balance. You do need to get the tight possession. You're going to get the boost to 95 acceleration if you're using one of the big time managers like Southgate or one of those that give you the boost acceleration. I do feel also with that tight possession at 90, it is going to limit his low pass and finishing, but you're still going to get 75 plus low pass and 80 plus finishing, which is very nice. Kicking power at 82 is nice as well. Stamina is not going to go to 90, but you don't really need it for a Roman flank because they'll, they will they cut into different positions, right? So for this build of Matoma, this is what we went with there, okay? Shooting 6, passing 2, dribbling 9, dexterity 8, and lower body strength 11. That's all you really need to do with this Matoma build. There's no other really way to build him, lads, honestly. Um, I mean, if you're looking at the card here, Obviously, it depends on how you want to play him. If you want to train him as an AMF, he's probably not going to be suited because of his play style. Just some cards are not worth tinkering with, lads. They're not worth messing around with. Matoma is a straight-up dribble-centric winger. 
You don't need anything else. If you're looking for more shooting and cutting in, if you're looking for crossing, then go for a crosser or a shooter dribble in. There's no point overcomplicating it. Now, Courtois is slightly different, right? I would say that Courtois is more of a kind of, how would I say it? He's more of an interesting choice because a lot of people are looking at Courtois as the main man going forward. Now, one big issue with this Courtois card is because he's not an epic or a booster or a legend or anything like that, his live update is set at C. He is a giant of a beast. He's got 199 cm height, very, very nice um, player ID as well. And he can save you a lot, especially if you don't do a lot of manual goalkeeping. I still prefer and I still think that Petr Cech is the best keeper in the game. But Courtois and Donnarumma are kind of always very solid. I know people that will rate this Courtois extremely high. Now we've gone for a build here that I kind of I feel is the best build if you don't manual dribble, or if you don't manual goalkeeper quite a bit, don't be manual and dribbling with your goalkeepers. Manual goalkeeping, right? 90 awareness, 85 catching, 94 parry, and 90 reflexes, and 90 reach. And then also, you don't really need the reach more than that, or the jumping more than that, because he's just such a beast. He's such a unit. He's so strong. He's so big. He's so physical. And I definitely think that Courtois can be a very effective goalkeeper for you, even more so if you don't manually goal goalkeeper a lot, right? If you are a manual goalkeeping a lot and you like to kind of get in your opponent's head, if it's 1v1s, you're conceding a lot of goals, I definitely think you should go with a smaller, kind of more nimble goalkeeper with higher reflexes. But 90 reflexes on this big beast is going to be enough, in my opinion. There are other builds you can obviously mess around with the catch and make that higher as well. But honestly, boys, with the way that the goalkeepers catch and save and parry, I don't think that there's really a point. Even though we've gone super high on parrying, that is because of the knock-on effect of training up the other build and the other cards. 8 into goalkeeper 1 and goalkeeper 2, 7 into goalkeeper 3, and an aerial strength gets 2, just to bring his jump and pass to 70 mark. So, that is it for the builds for the two boys. Is the match pass worth it or not? It depends. If you still have the discount, I would say Courtois is an in-game level goalkeeper, as long as you can take it sometimes that he's not going to be on top form all the time compared to, you know, Seaman, um, or Czech, or Schmeichel, or one of those. But, he definitely is a good card. I definitely recommend if you do want a goalkeeper and an end-level goalkeeper, you will get some of your coins back as well. So it's going to cost you about 250 if you want to get the coins back as well. And then you get your free stuff as well. Is the match pass worth it this time? I think it's okay, but I'll be interested to see what the next match pass is. They need to revamp it. Let me know what you guys think. I will be back very, very soon. Let me know if you've actually gone for Courtois. As I said, I know a lot of people rate Courtois quite a bit. Um, for me, I do rate Courtois a lot. But when I have the likes of, you know, David Seaman, I have Schmeich, or I have Peter Cech, I'm not really going to have to go for Courtois. In saying that, he does have really good stats. He's got really good player ID. And I know people that rate him above any other goalkeeper in the game. So yeah, that is it for me. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll talk to you in a bit. Peace.